So tell me a little bit more about security analytics specifically because it is combining logs, packets, and external threat intelligence. Tell me a little bit about what that looks like, if we could even diagram and uh, show where it is on the network and how it would look for some of the people that would be interested in it, some of our customers and prospective customers. Yeah, you bet. So maybe before I start on the board, just to kind of set the stage, I mentioned before that RSA has a legacy security information and event management platform called Envision uh, that was 100% logs focused. We also had a legacy deep packet inspection solution through an acquisition several years ago, a company called NetWitness. Security Analytics is the successor platform to both of those legacy platforms. And it does the three things that we've talked about. It allows you to collect the logs, it allows you to uh, collect the packets, and it allows you to fuse those two data sets together with the external threat intelligence. The great thing about this security analytics architecture is it is super scalable. If you want to start in all three of those areas that we've talked about, that's great. We'd love to talk to you about that. But we've got a lot of customers who say, you know what? Maybe I want to start with logs, and I'll get to packets later. Or maybe I'd like to start with packets, and I'm going to get to logs later. We support all of those different use cases, basically through three discrete functions. So let me go ahead and put those up here right now. Those three functions are represented in some cases by individual appliances uh, or not. We'll talk a little bit about that. But the most important appliance is something that we call a decoder. The decoder really is the workhorse of the security analytics solution. It's the decoder's job to either ingest the packets, you would typically have a dedicated decoder for packets, or you would have a dedicated decoder to ingest the logs as well. Uh, whether you're looking at packets or logs, depending upon your environment, that's potentially a lot of information that's being pointed at this single device. This could be a physical appliance. It could also be a virtual appliance, depending upon your setup. So the decoder really is the workhorse because it's doing two things. It's ingesting all this information, whether it's logs or packets that's coming into it. But much more importantly, the secret sauce of the security analytics solution is something I call metadata. So that as we are collecting the packets, as we're collecting the logs at this initial layer, we're also associating individual discrete data points out of that stream. So for instance, inside of a log, I might see something like a timestamp. I might see a source IP address or a destination IP address. I might see an error code. I might see uh, other information relating to that log entry. Think about packets. Typically a much wider data set, everything that I just named, the source, the destination, IP address, a protocol that's being used, uh, the port that's being used. We're smart enough for what it's worth with the decoder to look for standard protocols that are being issued on non-standard ports. So a good example is port 80, HTTP or web traffic. We see from time to time malware that tries to send out HTTP packets that's on a port other than 80. Or the absolute reverse. Maybe we have strange, unknown, weird protocols that are being passed on port 80. And a lot of the bad guys out there realize that if there's one port that's probably open in your environment, it's probably port 80. So we're port agnostic. We're going to be able to show you through the metadata that I just mentioned, if I see non-HTTP traffic, non-web traffic, but it's being passed on port 80, that's a piece of metadata that we're going to tag. We're going to just say instantly, this is non-HTTP traffic. So that if you're the human at the end of this process trying to analyze or work an incident, you don't have to be a Wireshark analyst. You don't have to be a packets guy or gal to figure this stuff out. The metadata that gets created by this decoder allows you to save yourself a lot of time and frankly, make yourself a lot smarter because we're going to do most of the heavy lifting for you here with the decoder. So again, the decoder's job is first to ingest and then it's to create this metadata. So all the information that's being captured at the decoder level is going to be stored. So the original logs, the original packets, depending upon your architecture, will be stored here at the decoder level. The metadata gets moved up to the second logical layer, and we call this the concentrator layer. Think of the concentrator really just as an index for all the metadata that the decoder created. So the decoder stores the original information, creates the metadata, and then it hands off the metadata to the concentrator. 
And that concentrator really is just a master index for all the information that's here on the decoder. You might have more than one decoder talking to a concentrator, so this isn't necessarily a one-to-one -one ratio. Again, that's one of the things that I can help you or any other sales engineer can help you figure out given the needs of your environment. The third and the final layer of the model is something we call a broker. The broker's job is really to farm out requests from some human that's sitting up here or some automated process that's sitting up there to say, I need more information around this specific stream of packets, or I need more information around this set of logs that's previously been ingested. The broker talks to one or more concentrators to say, where is that index of information that this human is now asking for? This concentrator puts up his hand and says, yep, it's me, I've got that information, and furthermore, out of the two or three decoders I'm talking to, the information you want is here. The human doesn't see any of that process. The human's interacting with all this information through a web browser, so anybody who's got a web browser can fully interact with the security analytics stack, uh, but uh, these, this three levels that I've talked about really is kind of the core building block for how we uh, bring this product to market. One other really important point, Bill, that I want to emphasize here is even though I've talked about how each of these boxes are typically physical, they could be virtual, let me bring out a different color and just point out that, especially for our medium-sized customers, we don't necessarily have to sell or offer you and you don't have to implement three separate boxes. Depending upon your architecture, we may be able to offer you a decoder and a concentrator together. We call that hybrid in conjunction with a broker. So maybe there will be two boxes, whether they're physical or otherwise. And for our smallest customers, we can even offer you everything in one box, AIO all in one. So all three of these features for smaller installation can be combined, the decoder, the concentrator, and the broker. So very flexible architecture, allows customers to start small and grow as their needs grow. As I mentioned before, you might want to only start with packets, or you might only want to start with logs. That's okay. You would have a log-specific decoder and concentrator, maybe a packet-specific decoder and concentrator, and then over time, you can grow into that solution. That's great. It's starting to make sense to me. Obviously, there's solutions for everyone, wherever their business is, at their enterprise level. They may have multiple boxes here, but the all-in-one option definitely looks appealing for small and medium-sized 